Um, we're, we're talking about unit 10, but we see in, in Lenny, and um, we're going to talk, talk about I stem third dimension nouns of the type polis, and U stem uh, third dimension nouns of the type basileus. Um, these are also, all of them, huge classes of nouns. Mm -hmm. And because the, the stem ends with a vowel, an I in one case and a U in the other, what happens is that I, in, when it's in between vowels, when there's a consonant after it, it remains. When it's in between vowels, it turned into a Y, so it went away. And the same happened with U. When it, there's a consonant after it, it remains, so we have a noun there with a U. But then the, the, it turns into a W when there's a vowel on the other side of it, so it will disappear. So this, this is the kind of thing that massively changes the, the way in which the, um, the forms look. Okay? But let's, let's start with the word polis. Um, let me show you the inflections of it in the singular. Um, polis is a, before we start, let's talk about polis, because this, mm -hmm. this is a really important word in this culture. It's the word for city-state, okay? Dictionary translates, the vocabulary translates it city, but it's not right. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not a city in our, our sense of the word. It's a whole cultural construct. Um, and there are all kinds of different kinds of city states in ancient Greece. Mm -hmm. uh, there, are, there are people in Denmark who've been studying Greek city states for about nine to fifty years and published tons of volumes about them all. But in any case, it's a complex construct, but it's not a city in the form that we know it. So it's a city with a with land around it. Um, there can be a central area. There can be a whole bunch of there are Greek city states from which you don't even have a central city. Mm -hmm. It's just a bunch of communities. Mm -hmm. And stuff like that. So, so there are various types, but this is the word for them, and um, and that's the nominative singular of it. Now, we see the I in the stem, in the, again in the in the accusative pollen. Okay, notice that's one of the third dimension endings that we learned. Remember, we learned that when we were viewing a moment ago the endings of the third dimension. We talked about the accusative being an alpha, but that's just a, a thing that happens when, when um, in most in most of the cases. Um, when the stem ends with a consonant, when the stem ends with a vowel, it, 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 see, you can see the N that originally was the a, alpha is what the N turns into when it can't remain there. So what happens then is that you get a, a genitive and a dative that don't have any iotas in them. So the genitive is polyos. Now look at the accent of this. This is really strange. You've got an acute accent on the first syllable. In other words, it's consistent, but it looks like you've got and then the dative is pale with an acute accent again on the first syllable where you would want it to be. Um, but it looks like you've got an accent on the third to last syllable of a noun which, in which the last syllable is long. It breaks the rules. Okay, probably the pronunciation was polios. Okay, mm -hmm. that something in between the diphthong and, the, and two separate sounds. So that mitigated this, but it's a result of a sound change. Um, the there's a there's a separate vocative for these s stems um, and that's just poly without the s okay remember we, we've said that the s is the nominative ending you can see it pretty clearly there the vocative is just the plain stem of the, of the i stem the so um and in the plural you know other things have happened okay so let's look at that the, acute, the nominative plural is polis um, eis with the circumflex and, um, and, the, and the accusative plural, whoops, it doesn't have a circumflex, that's wrong. It has an acute, sorry. The acute is persistent all the way through the paradigm. And so is the accusative plural, polis, okay? This is a, a feature um, that's, that's uh, actually with dialectal Greek. Some, some Greek dialects do have the as accusative plural ending for nouns like this, mm -hmm. but most of them don't. So it's the same as you see in Latin, for example, omnes is the nominative. Uh, plural for I stems, mm -hmm. and it's also the accusative plural. So the accusative plural is polis as well, okay? It's a very old thing that these nominative and accusatives are the same. And then, again, the dative and the accusative are going to be pala on with an acute accent on the first syllable consistently, and then polis for the dative plural. The I is going away because what's happened is it's disappeared, turned into a one and disappeared. So again, you can have a new one on it. So again, we, we, we face a problem here. How much do these things look like the standard third declension nouns? Mm -hmm. 
I mean, pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. okay. The basic thing is there. We're aiming at recognition. I think, you know, what you want to be sure of is that you you can tell what these are. I don't think, you know, if you're you're into memorizing, it's good to memorize. Polis, polyos, poly, mm -hmm. How long does it take? Um, and then keep on you know, make, making sure you know what's going on there. Okay, but but um, let's 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 uh, um, leave the judgment call on these up to you. But I at least still recommend that you memorize it. Okay, see if you too. can. Yeah, this word is everywhere, so yeah, it's worth it. There are a bazillion of these. The mm -hmm. most common uh, nouns in IS are actually cis nouns. Um, for example, mm -hmm. the the, uh, the nouns of the type pausis. You have the verb pao, and you have a noun pausis pa. Pauseos, like polis polaos, okay, yes. which means the pop, this verb you may remember means stop. The word pauses gives us the English word pause, okay, mm -hmm. so it means the process of stopping. So we can take any Greek verb and stick cis on the end of it, and it means the process of doing it. Mm -hmm. So there are gazillion, mm -hmm. okay, for example, um, and therefore you can't get away from it, and you'll get really familiar with this part. The second type that's like this um, is the U stems, and the standard example noun is the noun basileus, um, the word for king. Okay, um, this, this is all got an acute accent there, and uh, the the nominative singular is basileus. The the um, the genitive singular is basileus. Okay, but again, we're we're going through these situations where you where you have changes, and like with polyols, there the ending of, of the stem is in a U, okay, but the U that was there turns into a W and disappeared, so that's why you got no U there, and basile is the dative, okay, and then the accusative is basile a, all right, really weird, basile a with an acute accent, okay, and and provocative is basileo, O-S, okay, circumflex. Um, so this is the word for king in Greek. Um, yeah, there are no historical, well, next to no historical kings in, in, in ancient Greece. Okay, the only Greek city states that have kings is in Sparta, where there are two of them, <laughs> uh, <laughs> which doesn't work with our concept of king, <laughs> right? Um, you know, they were worked in common. Sometimes they killed each other, but anyhow, this is a—it's a historical or mythological concept. Kings in Greece, basically, not a, not a realistic one. So um, let's look at the plural of these. You get basileis is the accusative nominative plural, um, e i s, and so it's like pales, okay? Mm -hmm. Again, and it's plus yes. Yep, the accent is different. It's going to be on the final, the final vowel. Possible. Right. own is like polis, but again the accent's going to be on the epsilon, not on the on on the I mean not on the on the previous syllable. Basileusi, okay, makes sense if you think there is your basileo and you're adding the si. That's the only form that sort of looks regular in the circumflex over the U. And then basileas and then basile. Basileas is the form you've got here. Yeah. Some 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 yeah. There you are. So um, this is the this is the last of the types of third declension nouns in this lesson. So we got kinship terms, I stems, S stems, and U stems. Okay. Um, and again, uh, the, the S stems, the U stems, and the I stems represent huge classes. So we recommend memorizing.